Hey everybody, I hope you are having a great week in the Lord and wanted to take a few minutes and share with you a word of the week to help you um, along your way and along your journey and along your way forward. We've been talking about that for the past few weeks now, um, the way forward and following the way that the apostles fo followed um, the Lord in Acts chapter 2 as the Holy Spirit came and, and led them uh, further into their ministry, which was new to them now that Christ was gone. Certainly probably was scary, certainly was different, and um, it certainly it gave them opportunity to trust God for a new way forward. And that's kind of where we are, too, as God's children and as his church. And so this word of the week is to help encourage us as his children, um, and especially as his church, um, to help, our, help us on our way forward and help us know how to do that together. It's called a victory celebration and if you've ever seen a video clip of a parade after the super bowl or after the world series where the victors are parading down the main street in their home city you probably noticed something um, there's usually a lot of people there and that's because all those people have a team and an occasion in common uh, to celebrate together and sometimes we as believers need a reminder that we, as God's people, we also have much in common. And we also have much to celebrate together, mainly because of Jesus Christ and his victory. This past Sunday, we got to hear from Acts 2, Acts 2 um, again, five ways that Jesus was victorious and that and that we, therefore, may live and make our way forward victoriously. The message primarily focused on how we can do that in our personal lives, especially in regards to the state of the world in which we now find ourselves living. Sometimes when we are in such a state and when things in our lives are uh, in a state that we didn't expect or are having a hard time dealing with, it's important for us to step back and to look up and that means to step back and from all that is consuming us and to look up to christ and to his victory and when we do that it helps us to focus on what christ has done for us and it empowers us to move forward in the midst of whatever is going on in your life and all that's going on in the world around you we do this, we step back and we look up and focus on Christ's victory by remembering five things about his victory or five occasions of his victory that we talked about this past Sunday. I'm going to go over those very quickly with you. The first one was Christ's victory over all earthly powers and problems, which he proved to us through his miracles. The second one was Christ's victory over the schemes of Satan and evil men, which God proved to us by showing to us that the crucifixion of Christ was actually part of his plan that he allowed and foreordained for our salvation. Thirdly, Christ's victory over death, which leads to our eternal life. Fourthly, Christ's victory is evidenced by sending his sending of the Holy Spirit because of his victory he was able to be the one to once he ascended to heaven to send us the Holy Spirit fifthly it may be most important to you Christ victory over your sin and so that's the five occasions of Christ's victory that we talked about on Sunday and if you want to refresh a refresher as to how these things ensure your victory personally Go ahead to YouTube, maybe after you watch this or some other time, and check out the video uh, from Sunday and listen to that sermon if you weren't there or haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. And But in the meantime, what we're going to do right now is take a moment to focus on the fact that the truth of living victoriously in Christ also applies to us corporately, not just personally, but corporately as his church. God wants us to move forward 
And the only way that we can do that together is by focusing on our victorious Savior and seeing how his victory points to our victory as his church. For instance, based on Christ's victories that we just talked about, those five occasions of Christ's victory, there are five things that we can believe about going forward as his church. First of all, we can believe that God can handle every circumstance and situation that we experience because he's shown his victory over all earthly powers and problems. So we can believe that God can handle every circumstance and situation we experience, everything that may appear to be an obstacle or an opposition to what we know he wants us to do as his people. We can trust his victory to help us overcome that. Secondly, we can believe that God is supreme and sovereign over all earthly things, especially enemies to his will and his people, so that we will be, know that we will be victorious over our enemies and so that we do not give up or give over in the face of them. Thirdly, we can believe that we need not fear anything because Christ's victory over death has gained eternal life for us. And remember that eternal life is both in quantity and quality. And he's done that for all who trust in him. Uh, hundreds of years ago, there was a, a Christian scientist, mathematician, philosopher named Blaise Pascal. And he made this statement in one of his writings. He said, By God's grace, I await death in peace in the hope of being eternally united to him. Yet I live with joy, whether in the prosperity which it pleases God to bestow upon me, or in the adversity which he sends for my good, and which he has taught me to bear by his example. And so those first three examples of Christ's victory and how they apply to us as a church are a good testament of what Pascal was saying there, because... All of those things give us hope and death and life and an example to follow because of Christ's victory. The fourth th way that Christ's victory applies to us moving forward as his church is that it means that we can believe that we must be the body of Christ, doing the work of Christ by the Spirit of Christ and not of ourselves. The fact that Jesus Christ had such victory that enabled him to ascend to heaven and to send to us the Holy Spirit proves that he did that so that we would live and operate by the Spirit, not according to our wills and whims and according to our flesh in trying to do his work. And we need a heart check on that probably on a regular basis, a daily, moment-to-moment -moment basis um, about why and what why we're doing what we're doing and what we're doing in the name of the Lord and if we're doing anything in the name of the Lord fifthly we can believe that we need not be ashamed and that we cannot be condemned because Christ has had our vic has had victory over our sin so when tr Satan tries to trip us up or hold us back by discouragement um, through shame or condemnation we can know in our hearts that that doesn't apply to us as children of God. That doesn't apply to us as the church of God. We are his redeemed people by his grace. And we can live freely and serve freely and follow him freely because of the victory Jesus Christ has gained. All of this victory allows us and empowers us to move forward as the body of Christ, being his kingdom and expanding his kingdom. So what is it that you need to believe about Christ's victory to help you better be part of his church? It's a good question for you to ask yourself and to seek his answer for. And ask him to bless you and all of us to move forward together in faith and victory. I pray that you will do that as you read this word of the week in your email or watch this video or both. And that God will move in your heart to seek him as to how you can better be a part of moving forward as his church and with his church and for his glory. Would you pray that prayer um, with me right now? Father in heaven, 
we thank you for making us your children and we thank you for building us to be your church and we pray that you would help us to operate as your church according to all the victory that you have had through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray that you would help us to believe these things that we've talked about today and that you would help us to live by them together and not be distracted or deceived or discouraged to believe or to follow anything else and we ask you for that blessing and that help in Jesus name because of his victory amen I hope that you believe that I hope that you prayed that and I hope that you look forward to what God wants to do with us yet as his church I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing you on Sunday pray that you can make it to worship with us um, and we look forward to that in the name of Christ as well and because of his victory. God bless you and um, we will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.